illegal wildlife trade is a huge business. Run by dangerous international networks, wildlife and animal parts are trafficked much like illegal drugs and arms. By its very nature, it is almost impossible to obtain reliable figures for the value of illegal wildlife trade. Experts at Traffic, the Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, estimate that it possibly runs into several billions of dollars. Some examples of illegal wildlife trade are very well known, such as poaching of elephants for ivory and tigers for their skins and bones. However, countless other species are similarly overexploited, from marine turtles to timber trees. Not all wildlife trade is illegal. Wild plants and animals from tens and thousands of species are caught or harvested from the wild and then sold legitimately as food, pets, ornamental plants, leather, tourist ornaments, and medicine. Wildlife trade escalates into a crisis when an increasing proportion is illegal and unsustainable, directly threatening the survival of many species in the world. Tigers have faced unprecedented threats for many years, but stable conservation efforts over the past decade have shown that recovering tigers from the brink of extinction is possible when we transcend boundaries and work together. As human populations have grown around the world, so has the demand for wildlife and wildlife products. People in many countries are accustomed to a lifestyle which fuels the demand for wildlife. They expect access to a variety of seafoods, leather goods, timbers, medicinal ingredients, and textiles. At the other end, extreme poverty means some people see wildlife as valuable butter for trade for their bare survival. Illegal wildlife trade is driven by high profit margins and in many cases the high prices paid for rare species. Vulnerable wild animals are pushed further towards the edge of extinction when nature can't replenish their stock to keep up with the rate of human consumption. Rhino horn, elephant ivory and tiger products continue to command high prices among consumers, especially in Asia. In Vietnam, the recent myth that rhino horn can cure cancer has led to massive poaching in South Africa and pushed the price of rhino rival to gold. Gaps in protection is another important aspect that needs to be highlighted. Corruption, toothless law, weak judicial system, light sentences, and lack of political will allow criminal networks to keep plundering wildlife with little regard to consequences. These factors make wildlife trade a low-risk business with high returns. The poachers are often poor locals, are they usually the ones caught, leaving the real masterminds and their networks safe and operational with the ability to strike again. There are certain places in the world where wildlife trade is particularly threatening. These are called wildlife trade hotspots. They include China's international borders, trade hubs in East and Southern Africa and Southeast Asia, the eastern borders of the European Union, some markets in Mexico, parts of the Caribbean, parts of Indonesia and the New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. While these hotspots might be trouble areas at present, they also offer opportunities for great conservation success too, if action and funds are well focused. Wildlife trade alone is a major threat to many species, but its impact is frequently made worse by habitat loss and other pressure. The very existence of illegal wildlife trade undermines efforts made by countries to protect their natural resources. Illegal wildlife trade is run by criminal networks with wide international reach, some traffic, illegal drugs, arms, and even people. Recent evidence shows that some of these networks are linked to terrorist organization. Local wildlife is considered an important resource by many communities, often the poorest in the developing and the underdeveloped countries. Some rural households depend on wild animals for supply of their protein, trees for fuel, and both wild animals and plants for natural cures. Overexploitation of species affects the living planet in wider ways. Just as overfishing causes imbalances in the whole marine ecosystem, our complex wave of life on Earth depends on careful and thoughtful use of wildlife species and their habitat. Many invasive species have been purposefully introduced by wildlife traders or buyers. These invasive species prey on compare, compete with native species and are a major threat to the balance of nature. For example, pet Burmese python let loose by their owners are now considered a major pest in the Florida's Everglades in the United States. 
लाइक मेरीन स्पीसीज किल्ड थ्रू बाई कैच इंसिडेंटल किलिंग ऑफ एनिमल्स ऑल्सो हैपन ऑन लैंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्रूड ट्रैप सेट फॉर मास्क डियर और डुकर्स कॉज डैमेज एंड डेथ टू अ वेराइटी ऑफ एनिमल बिफोर दो इंटेंडेड Hence, it is quite important to understand that to stop illegal wildlife trade, is it, one has to collaborate with various international organizations and join together on a common network to prevent these from happening. It is important to work in close association with conservation organizations, local communities, and both government and non-government agencies to make significant impact in the wildlife trade to st- be prevented. The expertise of various international institutes involved in this process ensures that the threats to our the environment from wildlife trade are tackled by informed and global standpoint. If one thing to ban or limit trade in a particular species but another to effectively enforce this, especially in developing countries where trading and funds for enforcement are often lacking, many countries still lack strict legislation and or appropriate penalties for illegal wildlife trade. To address this challenge, organizations like WWF have come forward to help countries comply with conserva- Convention on International Trades in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora CITES regularly by supporting program development workshops and the creation of regulations. They also assist enforcement efforts and fund anti-poaching brigades. Shoikat Kumar Basu. कलिंग क्रॉनिफल टीवी कोलकाता ब्यूरो